Hi Mars, thanks for the footage and thanks for allowing me the opportunity to help you improve your game within the system. Um, what I'm trying to do within this critique is offer my thoughts on four key areas that relate to the issues that we discussed briefly online, i.e. the push to the right occasionally and the potential for gaining more power. Uh, a couple of these things are, as most things in golf, are linked. Um, but what I've tried to do is single out these, and I've listed them here at the top. Uh, my four main concerns are the four areas that I would consider attacking initially, and that would be your alignments at P7, tracing the arc post-impact, the way you load the accumulators, the arms and the wrists from P1 to P4, and your ability to extend the spine. Um, because of the nature of the, um, the online coaching, what I'm going to do is offer my thoughts on each one of those, um, along with the reasons why you need to maybe take a different approach, and the benefits on your ball flight. And then once I've done that, I will also email you some images or some documents across that relate to these changes so that you can go ahead and start working some drills or working on some drills and making some changes in your overall action. So if we take a little look at your alignments first of all, the impact, just take you down to impact. A lot of good stuff in the swing, uh, but there's also a lot of stuff that um, clearly leads to the type of shot pattern that you demonstrate. It's going to take you to impact from face on and down the line. Just miss impact a little bit there, just beyond it on that frame. Uh, but you'll sort of get the idea. So your alignments at P7 and how they differ. Just take Grant through a little bit beyond there. And how they differ to the two model swings. A lot of the time with better players like yourself, we look at impact and through impact first and then start to work on that and as those changes bed in you start to find that the backswing and transition change to allow you to make those changes anyway so initially what I'm seeing here are your shoulders are far too closed at seven you see Charlie's shoulders it's also is square to slightly open maybe a degree or two open at that point you can clearly see that there's much more rotation of the upper body. So this is more uh, an opening up of the chest from P4 to P7 so that things can align. When we look at that from face on, we see historically a player's head will have dropped back and his heart eyes will have changed tilts. You can see with Grant that the eyes are more level and the neck tilts are much less severe and there's been no translation away from the green line. Whenever the player's head drops back, whenever the right shoulder drops down, whenever the shoulders are too closed at P7, then that's going to direct the swing too much out to the right. Uh, it's indicative of someone who has maybe a little bit too much draw bias in the swing they've been working on the same thing um, or the same pieces for a little bit too long and then brings us on to the next point tracing the arc post impact you can see because of your alignments the hands and arms get thrown out above the plane on the way through so we're hitting out excessively whereas with Charlie you see the hands and the arms trace the arc on both sides of the circle so the arc that we swing on when we transcribe it on the ground come from the inside we then want to trace an inward arc on the way through we hit out excessively so how would you work that in first of all you can do some practice uh, with the cane to the side of the head this would help Just get rid of these lines here. This would help prevent 
a little bit of translation off as you complete the backswing with further translation during the downswing and what you would also do and I'll send you some like I say some documents and maybe a few links uh, of people demonstrating this in practice that I've worked with one on one place an alignment cane down on the ground about 10 paces in front of you and work on hitting some straight pulls slightly left of this cane and that would help encourage the chest to continue to rotate it would encourage the right shoulder to work down and around as opposed to predominantly down in transition and that would prevent the club dropping beneath the right forearm as it comes into delivery and reduce the tendency to direct the swing too much to the right you wouldn't necessarily need to play in that manner but that drill would start to give you the feel of turning the corner more appropriately from P6 to P8 so that's the alignments at P7 and the trace in the arc post impact the manner in which you load the club from P1 to P4 uh, is quite a delayed it's quite in quite a delayed manner you can see that as you take the club back it's almost like the butt end of the club and the club head move away at the same pace accumulator one the right arm is very late to load accumulator two really snaps in from p2 to p3 and this late loading of the right arm and the wrist is what's actually pulling you off the golf ball you can see the left shoulder working down nicely you're staying between the green and the red line and then now as you continue to keep the right arm straight delay the cocking of the wrist the left shoulder starts to get pulled across what we'd want to see is a more incremental loading as demonstrated here by Grant whenever you do things last minute it's going to be more difficult uh, we want to try and create um, a much more gradual loading of the accumulators on the way back so what we want to see is a gradual hinging of the wrists a gradual softening of the right forearm and in turn that's going to allow you to stay centered and allow the left shoulder to continue to trace a downward path whenever the left shoulder this relates again to the occasional push once the left shoulder starts to work around rather than down and around so it's no longer tracing a circle on a tilting angle the head is twisted off to the right as can be seen when viewed from down the line you see the eyes now start to come towards the camera head starts to rotate too much that's the left shoulder starting to work across rather than down and around and that's a good recipe for shifting the plane too much out to the right so the way you load the club and the way you improve the loading of the club uh, initially I would be placing those again I'll send you some images across I would be putting a towel fold the towel up into four and place it approximately 12 inches behind the golf ball this is going to encourage a faster or an earlier ascent of the club head in order to get the club to work up sooner you're going to have to start to load the accumulators faster that's going to improve your ability to keep the left shoulder working down and keep the head stable as you do that what you're going to see is rather than having your I'm just going to change colors here rather than having your forward bend maintained this is the final point you're going to start to see the forward bend diminish 
and become more of an extension. So we're going to start to reduce this gap here. Now that move or that position for you is more of a consequence of the other things that you do. Um, as you control the translation and head in the backswing, you start to load the accumulators in a much more appropriate manner. You'll start to find that this gap here starts to diminish. Um, that's the stretching off of the spine from a power perspective. That is a huge uh, catapult effect. If you can increase the extension of the spine in the backswing, you're going to increase the power in your golf swing. Uh, if you don't increase distance straight away, you will find that you can hit it the same distance with less effort, which is a nice place to be as a tournament golfer. Uh, you also then have a little bit extra in the tank to, uh, to add to the shot if you desire. The other thing um, that this will, or this process will allow you to do in regards to power is when the swing is directed out to the right, the body has to stop and the hands have to rotate. That's the only way you can turn the corner down at the bottom and prevent these shots being pushed out to the right. You're a good player, you have the ability to do that, but it's not a super efficient move uh, in regards to power. We want to keep everything moving at the same rate through impact. It's only a subtle change, but you're going to start to see this position improve and it's going to become a little bit less um, a little bit less flipped, a little bit of a longer arc without hitting out necessarily more. Uh, the left wrist is going to start to flatten out and there's going to be much more, uh, much more use of the trunk rather than at the moment you potentially uh, run the risk of a little bit of stall as you're coming through uh, which can lead to the block or a hook. So we need to address your alignments at P7. This can be done by hitting uh, pulls in practice by controlling the movement of the head during the backswing. This is also going to help your ability to trace the arc post impact. Whenever you swing in the club on a better line and you're not struggling directionally, you're going to be able to add more power. You need to learn to load the accumulators in a more gradual manner rather than a lot of last minute loading which again is not terribly efficient, not ideal for maintaining stability during the backswing. And in doing that, you're going to start to extend the spine more, which in turn is going to produce uh, that catapult effect, which gives you much more potential for power. So they're the key points that I think you need to consider regarding your overall action. Um, I will add some images. I will also add some um, some comparisons that I've done with players, like I said, one-on-one, -on -one, and then you can build up a better picture in your mind of the drills that I'm asking you to do. Uh, pretty straightforward drills, pulling it left of a cane, stopping the head, translating back with the cane to the right-hand side of your head, it's set up and a towel folded behind the golf ball, about a foot behind, 12 inches behind, to encourage a more incremental loading of the accumulators from P1 to P4. Um, apply those pieces, you're going to see a marked difference in your power and you're certainly going to see your, uh, not that it's a regular occurrence judging by your emails, but your tendency to having the ball outright diminish significantly over the coming weeks. Good luck with it. Look forward to conversing with you on Twitter. Uh, keep me updated please and if you've got any questions feel free to either tweet or send me an email.